So in this next video, man, we're gonna dive a little bit more into the origins of history, right? This video is titled over 400,000 years ago, they visited earth. Now that phrase right there, that can spark a year long conversation, right? They, who's they, they visited earth, right? Mind goal, found the Nephil and the Sumerian empires, right? Or Sumerian empires, however you pronounce it from, depending on where you're from. All right, so we're gonna dive into some more history. If you knew you know what to do, hit that subscribe button, join the family, and hit that like button for more content. Let's check it out. Conspiracy theorists are trying to force us to believe that everything we've ever known about the creation of Earth and humanity is a lie. But it turns out their creativity can sometimes produce real facts. Some explorers, such as, for example, Zechariah Sitchin, who's interested in secret histories, think that ancient clay tablets, the Great Pyramid of Giza, strange hieroglyphs, old bas-reliefs with unique artifacts and many other findings Probably may tell reveal the truth about the creator of our civilization. But most importantly, geneticists have recently found valuable clues in our own DNA. So who, after all, created human beings? That's why I'm adamant about staying down this path of going through this information and researching it and looking this stuff up, because I believe there lies the answers to the questions that we have. It's 1849. Archaeologist Henry Layard, together with his team, is conducting excavations in Iran at the site of the ruins of Sippar, a currently non-existent city. It used to be part of a glorious region named Mesopotamia, and its streets look like a sophisticated network of ancient buildings. That place used to be inhabited by Sumer, very advanced civilization that was way ahead of its time in terms of scientific and engineering knowledge. But what was the secret of their genius? Archaeologists were trying their best to find the answer. That's why the team was beyond excited to discover not just two or ten, but around 20,000 clay tablets written by ancient Sumerian scribes. This treasure is 5,800 years old. Historians were eagerly waiting for the translations as they hoped that such a progressive civilization would shed light on lots of things we struggle to understand. When researchers finally got the adapted texts, they noticed that the Sumerian creation myths occasionally overlap with folk tales of other nations, with the Bible, and even with some generally accepted scientific facts. Despite this, the Sumerian version of events was quite valid and absolutely insane at the same time. How is that even possible? Well, you should better hear it out to see what I mean. The starting point for the intellectual leap of the ancient Sumerians was the day when they gained knowledge from those who came from the skies. The Sumerian language has a special term. See, there goes that they again. <laughs> for these deities, the Anunnaki. According to some descriptions, they had wings. According to others, they were half people and half birds. The Sumerians wanted to highlight their ability to fly. In their texts, the ancient people said that these creatures mostly looked like humans, but had broader shoulders. They're so this is where they tie into the Bible, the story about the angels coming down and, you know what I mean, creating the Nephilim, I think it was. Their heads were elongated and egg-shaped. The Anunnaki could be enormously tall and grow up to five meters. Besides, they could live for more than a thousand years. That's why they were considered divine beings. The Sumerians claim that the main reason the Anunnaki descended to Earth was to search for gold. This raises the question, why do almighty deities need some chunks of metal? Even though that's not the weirdest part of the Sumerian writings, members of the mysterious civilization claim that these creatures from the skies created humans, and not out of boredom, but because they needed someone to complete the hard task of gold extraction for them. According to the ancient what? Sumerians, it seems that humans came into existence for one simple reason, to do the hard work instead of these super- So we were, y'all basically trying to say we were created for labor? 
I bet they would be pretty disappointed with the human race right now with all the laziness that's out there. That's not everybody, but some people. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're not too happy with us now. Y'all believe that? That's the first time I've ever heard that. For beings. But the most unexpected part of the early texts is a legend telling exactly how people were created by these gods. 250,000 years ago, the Anunnaki started thinking about how to make a primitive worker. They remembered that there already was a perfect life form to fit the role. It was a monkey whose physique slightly resembled their own. And yet, the animals were far behind them in evolutionary development. Then, the monkey genes really? got modified. This strongly reminds me of biblical motifs, since the Anunnaki also wanted to make a human in their image and likeness. I think you'll agree that this is the first time in our history that the theory of evolution and Christianity align so closely. Humans populated vast territories and started extracting gold. Everything was running smoothly until the Anunnaki began copulating with mortal women. This led to the birth of hybrids who were neither the pure Anunnaki nor the people of Earth. Then, the Supreme God decided to erase the human race and restore the status quo. Oddly enough, they didn't go against the Bible. They summoned a great flood. The Anunnaki returned to the skies and leisurely watched their creations die. When the planet and its wildlife recovered, they came back and created other humans way more perfect than the previous version. The Anunnaki trained them in many fields and made them highly intelligent. Can you guess who those finest representatives of the human species were? Of course, they were the Sumerians who by sheer chance happened to be the authors of the clay tablet stories dug up by archaeologists. And that's not all. In a short while, the Sumerians started fighting with the Anunnaki because they weren't happy with their slave position. That's why those who came from the skies made another return trip. Only this time, they were generous to humans and even let them keep knowledge and evolve further independently. So what do you think? However strange it may sound, all theories very, about the creation of humans. Very, you started out telling us they showed up here. Anunnaki showed up here. Uh, uh, wanted somebody to, to do the dirty work for them. Needed so something or was looking for something. They found the apes because they look similar to them. So they were able to create humans because they were closely in relations to what they look like. Used apes to create humans. And then didn't like how it went, showed back up again. And this time you actually liked humans. So you allowed us to be able to, or gave us the power to be able to, what, become smarter, intelligent thinkers, different things like that, proceed forward, be innovative. Am I, am I grasping what you're trying to say in this video? That this is, this is interesting. Yeah into one on the Sumerian tablets. These scribbles mention everything, evolution, deities creating people, and even an alien civilization that came to Earth and sparked life here. The oddest thing is that modern archaeologists, historians, and even astronomers have found a lot of proof to back up every word of this legend. That's because, most probably, the Anunnaki weren't mysterious gods at all. They were something else. Naturally, most contemporary scientists are skeptical about the clay tablets found in the mid-19th century. They dismiss the texts about the Anunnaki as yet another example of the overactive imagination of ancient peoples. Our ancestors used to have tons of myths up their sleeves to explain everything they couldn't understand. For example, when nobody knew such words as meteorology or lightning, the bright flashes up in the sky were taken for divine wrath. However, Zechariah oh, Sitchin, the author who's interested in secret histories, thinks that- I could imagine how scared that was at that time back then. Imagine what some of our parents did to us when it started thundering and lightning, just to get us to sit down somewhere and be quiet, right? 
Now, multiply that times a million as to them not even having the knowledge or information, like he said, didn't understand the words meteorologist or, or anything like that. So they're thinking the gods are upset or something like that. Bro, imagine the fear you could invoke in people. Zechariah Sitchin, the author who's That's interested insane. in secret histories, thinks that the Sumerians were way too smart to really believe that. The creatures that descended from heaven to visit them were probably something more real than fictional deities. The Azerbaijani scholar literally dedicated his life to the Anunnaki. Besides the tablets, he carefully studied such ancient Sumerian texts as the Epic of Gilgamesh and a creation myth called the Enuma Elish. He also surveyed a lot of hieroglyphs, rock paintings, and figurines found in the area, which once used to include Mesopotamia and Egypt located nearby. Therefore, Zechariah fully recreated a picture of how the Anunnaki got to Earth. According to the author, they came to people right from outer space. There is indirect evidence in favor of Sitchin's theory, Hittite bas reliefs. One of them depicts things that look like rockets, while on the other, you can see a chamber radiating light and a god inside it. These are hieroglyphs found in the ancient Egyptian city of Abydos. You can notice objects remarkably similar to a helicopter, an airship, and a spaceship, like those from Futurama. There's no way ancient Egyptians could have innovative technologies like that. Subsequently, these flying machines Why? could belong to some hyper-developed civilization. But even assuming that the Anunnaki are more than just a legend, one question remains. Why did they extract our planet's gold? What for? It's thought that the aliens use this precious metal not as a currency and not as jewelry. They needed gold to create a protective layer around their native world. Zechariah took the clay tablets as a basis and assumed that, judging by those texts, the Anunnaki came from planet Nibiru. The Sumerian scribbles tell us that hundreds of millions of years ago, it collided with another astronomical body that split into the Earth and the Moon. Nibiru was almost completely destroyed, so its inhabitants periodically flew to Earth and dug for gold to restore it. This opportunity appears every 3600 years when Nibiru and Earth come close together. This is exactly how long it takes the planet to make a full revolution around the Sun. You may think this story sounds too far-fetched, but this version could- I mean, you're basically telling us they used us for the gold on our planet. So what are we still here for? What, after they, if they've gotten everything they needed, what, what's, what's, what's our use? What, what good are we to them? Nothing. I would have figured if that was the case, if this is to be true, then we would be destroyed. Our planet is, is useless. Is that the pity of them saying, okay, well, we'll allow y'all to live amongst this planet for the rest of your dying days. We've gotten what we want and they're gone. And we're just now just here living out, supposedly to be our lives, being thankful for ever being created. That's a bit much to believe. I, I Even for, for them, that, that's a bit much. Easily explain the odd behavior of Uranus Astronomers notice that the planet wobbles as it moves along its orbit. John Anderson, a scientist from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, believes that this phenomenon could be caused by gravitational interaction with another planet unknown to science. Moreover, some images of ancient artifacts could indeed serve as proof of the Anunnaki's alien nature. In the region of Mesopotamia, experts came across mysterious stone disks made 10 or 12,000 years ago. They depict something like a UFO that's about to land. These carved pieces of stone glorify King Hammurabi. He ruled Babylon, which was part of Mesopotamia. Curiously enough, Next to the king, you can see a god whose headdress looks incredibly similar to a modern spacesuit. Another pretty bizarre bas-relief is stored in Berlin in the temple of the Mesopotamian goddess Ishtar. 
The goddess here also wears a helmet that again reminds one of a spacesuit. It seems to be equipped with special goggles and headphones attached to some sort of flat antenna. What's more, during excavations in the region of former Nineveh, a city of Upper Mesopotamia, archaeologists found a peculiar circular tablet dating back to the period between the 10th and 7th centuries BC. Conspiracy theorists think that it was the manual for spaceship pilots. Deciphering this text requires help from a wide range of specialists, linguists, mathematicians, and experts in space navigation. Together, they establish that the tablet describes a travel route of the Anunnaki supreme deity named Enlil. By the way, if you look at the pictures of the Sumerian gods closer, you'll see them wearing something like modern watches. Apart from that, the ancient texts helped scientists determine that the locations of so-called spaceports really coincided with the hotbeds of development of ancient human civilizations. According to the Sumerian tablets, aliens used air corridors above the Tigris-Euphrates river system to fly over Earth, and that's precisely where Egypt and Mesopotamia were. Then why did the alien gods bless with their presence only the Sumerians? And why don't they visit their spaceports anymore? Maybe it happens for the reason that was once suggested by the cosmologist Stephen Hawking. He believed that aliens don't contact us because they see us as an extremely underdeveloped life form. But maybe we could have been much more advanced if the Sumerians had... Now we're undeveloped? Are you, are you kidding me? Is this just a video just pretty much telling us how, how bad we are? Like... Huh? Why y'all gotta downplay us like that, bro? I'm, they ain't gonna keep taking cheap shots at us like this. Underdeveloped. Wow. Developed life form. But Underdeveloped maybe we life. could have been much more advanced if the Sumerians hadn't refused to cooperate with the Anunnaki. You probably have no idea how many spheres of life the ancient Sumerian civilization pioneered at the time. For instance, let's take the most basic thing. We owe to them the invention of the wheel. Next, the Sumerians were the first to develop a complex irrigation system, the artificial application of water to the soil, and their cities were created in grid patterns. This system became an example for future urban planning. Back in the day, the Sumerians began to develop metallurgy using copper and other metals to produce various tools and weapons, apart from spears, swords, and daggers made of copper and iron. They also produced armor that included helmets chainmail, and shields. The ancient people of Mesopotamia invented the first writing system in the world called cuneiform. They used it to inscribe their laws, rituals, business deals, and other essential documents on clay tablets. As for exact sciences, the Sumerian expertise had no equal. For example, they devised a sexagesimal number system that was later modified and is now used to measure time and angles in modern geometry. The Sumerians also made one of the first calendars in history based on the moon cycles. A year was divided into 12 months, and each month was divided into 30 days. Judging by the deciphered texts, the ancient Sumerians had very accurate information about our universe, stars, and planets, and were quite competent in astronomy. Six now, they're making some great points, but because how often have you sat around just like me and thought about Okay, how did the first person or whoever came up with this, how did they just, did it just pop in their brain? So if I wanted to find some things to support my theories, I could easily do that as well. Who's to say the brain didn't just get smarter over time and develop, you know? Like we have people born every day that exceed expectations. We have that. so. It could just be evolution that over time our brains got smarter. We tried different things, trial and error. Still got to apply that to history. And we progressively got better at something. I can make those arguments. But I can't sit here in line having said, oh, well, dang, I, how, who came up with that? How did they get that information? So they play on that part of you. 
They play on that part of you because some of us still have that part. I know I do that have those questions about certain things that they did in the past. And you're like, how? No way. Where did they get that type of information from? But at the same time, it could be just as simple as trial and error. Thousand years ago, they already realized that Earth orbits the sun. Sumerian astronomers divided the sky into 12 signs of the zodiac. They knew about all the planets in our solar system, even though Uranus, for instance, was officially discovered in 1781 and Pluto entered the picture only in 1930. And don't forget that they lived between the 4th and the 3rd centuries BC, when they couldn't even dream of having telescopes or other present-day scientific devices. Of course, we'd like to believe that our ancestors were brilliant enough to invent all those things without the help of any super-advanced creatures, but it seems that modern geneticists have found possible proof that absolutely everything humans have is a gift from the Anunnaki. Back really? in 1963, scientists from Stockholm University, Margit Nas and Sylvain Nas, figured out that DNA in the human body is present not only inside the cell nucleus, but also outside of it. This variation was called mitochondrial DNA. Conspiracy theorists think this confirms Anunnaki's genetic creation of human DNA. The gods wanted to give birth to an easy-to-train hybrid race that they would fully control. Mitochondrial DNA is passed down from the mother to her children, and it may be a key element in preserving Anunnaki genes as an integral part of human biology for generations to come. Sounds insane, but if these statements are at least partially true, it means that the aliens wanted us to achieve their high level of development, but remain unable to surpass it. Any attempt to deviate from the plan was immediately punished, which is why there was a great flood. Although some Sumerian texts talk about a royal descendant of the Anunnaki, King Gilgamesh. A legend says that the Anunnaki took him on a space flight so that he could see Earth from afar. But as Gilgamesh saw Earth getting smaller and smaller, he panicked and was taken back. But he's not the only real too. human who, according to present-day sure. concepts, could be somehow linked to aliens from Nibiru. Conspiracy theorists think that one famous woman was an obvious descendant of the Anunnaki. That is Nefertiti queen of ancient Egypt. Just look at her bust really? found in the city of Amarna. Nefertiti had a rather unusual appearance for an Egyptian ruler. She had an exceptionally long neck, big eyes, and an elongated egg-shaped head. Sounds very similar to the descriptions of the Anunnaki. Pharaoh Cheops is also said to be related to these ancient aliens because in one of the ancient statues, he's also immortalized with a weird-looking oblong head. Besides, he lived to be 96 years old, which was abnormally long for ancient Egypt. In that era, the average life expectancy of a man was just 40 years. But most importantly, if the pharaoh indeed was related to the Anunnaki, this could explain how he managed to build a structure as complex as the Great Pyramid of Giza. Up to this day, there's a lot of controversy in the scientific world over how exactly the huge stone blocks were moved around and what the pyramid was really meant for. Furthermore, there's a hypothesis saying that together with the other pyramids, it was specifically positioned to represent Orion's belt. In short, there's one undeniable fact. Completing such a project requires good knowledge of astronomy, math, and engineering. And perhaps aliens from Nibiru will teach our future generations new invaluable lessons if we assume that the Anunnaki do exist and visit Earth once every 3,600 years, then we can expect their next appearance in 15 centuries. But this is assuming that researchers didn't make a mistake when calculating the date of their latest visit. Guests oh, from Nibiru may announce up. themselves much sooner. And nobody can tell what this historic meeting will look like. The Anunnaki might destroy humankind as they once did, or pamper people with new knowledge and technologies. And yet, it's still unclear how they'll treat us, like their followers, allies, 
or slaves. Today, conspiracy theorists are sure that people with Rh-negative blood might be successors of the Anunnaki. This kind of blood isn't rare, and many famous people of the past and present aren't known to have it. In particular, the Queen of the United Kingdom, Elizabeth II, Tom Cruise, Beyonce, Neil Armstrong, and many others. If we take all those theories seriously, we've got to start looking for the alien deities' sons and daughters right now so that we can have decent ambassadors of our civilization when the time comes and our creators take the stage. We don't want any conflicts, right? Now, don't waste time and find out your relatives' blood types. Squint your eyes and check your friends' not. head shapes. Analyze the average Why height. Why would we ever do that to create more problems or to create a hierarchy saying, oh, I'm up here and you're down here? Why would I? Why would we even put that out to the people to be a, we're divided enough, don't you think? Your school basketball team members, when you're done, comment below and reveal the names of possible descendants of the Anunnaki. We've got to prevent another flood from eliminating the human species again. Wow. I, they really like went somewhere that I had never heard them go before. Wow. They even started to sound like the Illuminati towards the end. Very much so. Very much so. But interesting still, nonetheless, because we still don't have the answers. So who's to say that this is not true? You can feel how you want to feel about it, but you still lack the, the information or don't have the answers. So this is just another... I guess another theory that we have to consider. Could this be true? And you know, sometimes, sometimes, let's say that again, sometimes the most outlandish thing sometimes be the most truthful thing. We just don't want to hear it. And maybe that's where I'm at right now. I'm in denial. Maybe that's what it is. I am in denial. Y'all get at me in the comment section, though. Let me know what y'all thought. How y'all felt about this. How this made you feel. What did it make you think? Did you see any similarities in things you've read, the Bible included? H how? Could this be possible? Y'all let me know. Stick around and stay tuned. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.